I've been working in education for 10 years now, and over time, I started wondering if the instructional techniques I learned in my training were working in the new contexts where I was applying them. I started hearing about the field of user experience research, and I found it could help me understand whether we were creating positive, successful learning experiences for the people who participate in our programs. I recently did a user experience study on a piece of book layout software made by SAL, and was able to learn a great deal about how people use it in their education programs, as well as what can make the software better. User experience research is a kind of applied research that focuses on getting actionable information quickly in order to improve an experience. The phrase is a mouthful, so it's sometimes shortened to UX research. Its toolkit includes research methods, principles, and deliverables that are designed to serve the needs of a team that's making or improving something. User experience research overlaps with the idea of act in research, which is widely used in education. Act in research is a type of study that educators undertake to identify problems or weaknesses and develop solutions to address them quickly and efficiently. Both user experience research and action research focus on directly informing choices within a specific context. They differ largely in the techniques that they use and that user experience research began as a set of tools for improving technology products. Both contrast with academic research, where the goal is to publish findings that are independently validated and reproducible. As I've learned more about the field of user experience research, I realized it offers three major benefits that help me improve my education work. First, it focuses me on the people in the education program. Second, it helps me conduct just enough research to improve my program, so the research itself doesn't get overwhelming. Third, it includes techniques that anyone can use to become better at research. The first benefit is in the name. It focuses on users. The research doesn't just examine how a system is supposed to work. It looks at what the system is like from the perspective of the people who use it. Because the field originated in technology, user typically referred to a person using a computer program, but it can just as easily refer to a student using a textbook or a teacher using a chalkboard. This focus on users is helpful because it points us back to the reason that we do what we do, helping people learn the knowledge and skills they need to meet their goals. The field also emphasizes that we need to conduct research to understand our users. No matter how long we've been working in a particular place, there are always new perspectives we haven't heard. For example, in the study I conducted on a piece of book layout software, the software developer is well connected to the users and the team collects feature requests through an online forum. They asked me to do more formal research, so I interviewed a series of users and potential users. The interviews included a question about what features they would like to see added to the program. When I shared the feature requests I had heard, the developers said they were significantly different from the ones they got through the forum. This shows that choosing to conduct user experience research allowed us to access user feedback they were not getting from their typical channels. User experience research includes a collection of techniques for learning about users. Most of these were created in other fields like psychology or anthropology, and they'll probably sound familiar to you. Methods like surveys, field observations, and interviews. One method that may be less familiar is called usability testing, which is the practice of testing how easy a product is to use with a group of representative users. It usually involves observing users as they attempt to complete tasks. It allows the researcher to assess whether people can complete the task, see what they enjoy about the product, and identify problems with it. For example, an education team working in Nigeria wanted to see whether a set of textbooks they were designing in the Hausa language would be easy for teachers to use. The team briefly taught some teachers to use a set of prototype lessons. As each teacher taught students with the prototypes, a team member observed. The team then used those observations and feedback from the teachers to gradually improve the materials. A major focus of user experience research is doing just enough research. The focus is on improving a specific product or program, so the goal is to learn enough to make decisions. Sometimes these are big, general decisions that deserve years of research, but most often these can be broken up into much smaller decisions that only require days or hours of research. That means UX research can go much faster than more formal academic research. UX researchers still use high quality methods for gathering and analyzing data, but they may not need to gather as much data and the analysis tends to move more quickly. In contrast, academic research is categorically focused on making generalizable claims, so it typically requires more data, more reviews, and more time. One example of this faster pace is that UX researchers often do just five usability tests at a time, 
That's based on a study from 1993, when UX researchers used academic quality research to mathematically show that conducting just five usability tests will identify about 85% of the usability problems in a product. Because the goal is to improve the product, rather than to identify 100% of the problems, the UX researchers on a product can deliver their results and get changes made extremely quickly. In software development, these cycles are often as short as two weeks. After that, the researchers test another five people to see what problems remain, whether the changes have created new problems, and so on. The focus is not on learning everything there is to know. It's on getting immediate, actionable insights. A second example of saving time is using a technique called hallway testing. It can be difficult to find representative users to test something, but it's still better to test with someone than not to test at all. So the researchers take the product out to the nearest hallway and test it on anyone who is not directly involved. This can be really helpful to creators who tend to be too close to the product to see potential problems. A coworker of mine could have benefited from this expanded view of testing, she had created materials for a mother tongue education program in Cameroon. She wanted input from the rural teachers who would use the materials, but she didn't have the budget to visit them often. So she printed the materials without testing them. In retrospect, she said she could have tested the books at the schools nearby in town. Those teachers weren't the intended users, but it still would have given her a chance to address basic issues with her materials that affect teachers more generally. These are examples of doing just enough research, getting what is most valuable out of the research work. The final benefit has to do with the idea that research can be daunting, especially for people who are new to the field. One benefit of user experience research is that its nimble toolkit offers approachable techniques for people who want to improve their research skills. Many of the user experience research methods have low overhead. Although research labs and equipment may help in some cases, they are usually not necessary. Many methods consist of talking to people or observing them as they do a task. A lot of user experience research can be conducted in a matter of days or weeks, which lowers the barriers to trying out new methods. I can try something I've never done before, and if it doesn't go well, I haven't spent much time on it, and I probably still learned something useful. It's also easy to learn about the user experience research process from books and websites. We've included some links to below that can help you get started. In conclusion, for education programs that want to understand how they can improve, user experience research offers a flexible approach that focuses on the experiences of people using a product or system. It can be scaled to address problems of any size, whether small or large, and usually moves faster than academic research, which is helpful for projects with tight deadlines. Information about the field is readily available, so with time and practice, education practitioners can try out user experience research techniques to improve their programs. Check out the description below for more resources. You should like say like thanks for watching my video and stuff, right? Uh, this isn't YouTube love. Yeah, it is.